Hello, people of YouTube! My name is Steve Gray, and thank you for watching. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, leave a like, and feel free to comment down below what you would like to do for future guitar and music-related videos. So today we are talking about Ebiphone again, um, and we have a couple new guitars from this uh, premiere guitar video. I'll kind of go through the gist of it, try to run down a little bit of the specs, and uh, go from there. I am using a, my laptop's microphone, uh, just trying it out yet again. It sounded a little weird uh, last video I did with this, but not massively weird. I, th I think it'll get my point across. But uh, let's just get right into it. They're starting off with like the uh, Epiphone version of the replica of the 1959 uh, Gibson Les Paul. Uh, basically, your standard mahogany, rosewood, maple cap. Uh, he's got the AAA maple veneer. It has Gibson burst bucker pickup, so it's not Epiphone pickup. If I can find a price for you guys. So we're just going to skip through a lot of this. But uh, there's the guitar. I mean, it's a, it's a nice looking guitar. James Nichols and our 1956 Les Paul from Les Pauls. You guys do have pro buckers, but these are actual burst buckers. The so it feels really nice and in your knuckles or whatever <laughs> I mean, and this is also just you know this is one of those guitars that it's not going to be weight relieved so if you're worried about that nothing to worry about there basically it's very similar specs to the gibson minus obviously being the polyurethane versus nitro finish and the headstock and being the made bad, in China. Yeah, fingers. Yeah. yeah yeah it's a rolled it's a rolled neck so you're able to to take in and not have the sharp edges where the the fret the frets and the uh, the fret binding is with Epiphone is, is, is killer because he actually helped, you know, um, basically bring Epiphone into the Gibson uh, fold. Real difference. Of that, yeah, that these are press, okay. yeah, they're press and bushing tuners, just like the 59, with that kind of more historical look in terms of the... So if you're also if you're not familiar with this particular guitar, um, Gibson is doing, I think, like an anniversary guitar for the 59 again. You know, trying to do exact specs. And as you know, with the new Gibson lineup, if there's a Gibson version of it, there's going to be an Ebiphone version of it as well. So this is basically their version on it. I don't exactly know the price of the guitar, but let's the, the let's get to that part. Right there. Sweet. So what are this we is, this isn't something, in my opinion, that I am personally going to buy. I already have owned several Ebiphone Les Pauls. Uh, yes, it does have the Gibson pickups. Um, it's going to have a different neck profile as well, uh, but. I don't really need it. I'm looking more at the Prophecy series, which we'll get to in a bit. Look at next. Oh, oh yeah, don't forget about this. Yeah, limited so it's a limited edition, edition right? Limited edition. We're going to you know get it while you can over the course of the next uh, year plus, and you never know what we're going to come out with next. We've got it in Vintage Sunburst and Heritage Cherry Age Gloss finishes. Sweet. And, uh, switchcraft parts, uh, toggle switch, switchcraft output jack. And you've got the uh, Mallory capacitors for that vintage sound, CTS pots, and the wow. uh, Archell case. So you've got the tan and pink case. So it's a complete package, uh, and it's a killer, killer guitar. And I know you're going to ask me about this, so I'm ready. The price. The price, yeah. Because that's <laughs> Here we go. Here's the price. The price for this Seven ninety nine. Wow, that's a great deal. A lot of guitar for the money. For sure. All right. So this is, um, they're, they're getting more expensive in my opinion. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I picked up a few of the new Ebiphone guitars. They play very well, sound very well. I actually enjoy the pickups, unlike the, the model I currently have, which at some point I will switch out the pickups with, but who knows? I still like and enjoy playing the guitar. Um, it's not my main guitar either, but um, it, it, the, the price for these new Ebiphones is getting up there. Um, I think what they're trying to do right now is um, better quality. Uh, they're trying to compete with ESP along those markets. And the reason I say that more is because uh, if you're familiar with e ESP LTD, they have the LTD 1000. Uh, that is like about a thousand dollar guitar, roughly. It usually comes with EMGs, Fishman Fluence pickups, one of those. Sometimes a few of them I've seen with, uh, you know, actual Floyd Roses, not the not the special like the original Floyd Rose or the Made in Germany Floyd Rose, and also. Um, I think I've seen a few of them with an Evertune as well, and then look like at the $1,200 range. And these are over the seas guitars, but they are just really great guitars for the money because you, you don't have to deal with the American market because that, that's typically what it comes down to. Um, I, I very much like American guitars. I would definitely say American made guitars are probably the best there is out there right now. Um, 
but you got to keep in mind with all the cost of labor and everything, obviously, if you get it something overseas, it's going to end up costing you less money. And um, it's good for the consumer because th like this right here, this would be a great, great mid-range guitar for a player. You know, this could be your number one very easily with the pickups and hardware on it. And I could definitely see somebody geeking out with this thing, no problem. Yeah. So what? Are, that's a lot to got a coronet which is a single model p90 that's coming out but this so now they're talking about like the coronet also, and i think the wilshire if you're familiar uh, with Jimi hendrix Paul. he was the one that originally played that i'm going to see if i can find a better image for all of you to see not a lot going on here actually i don't think he really shows it let's go here so we've got um <laughs> He's in. He's digging that well, sure, isn't he? Ooh, what, what has he got? A prophecy <laughs> there. He's in the Good thing you've got control of the. There we go. Switch, There's huh? the prophecy. God. Let's <laughs> let's go back. To, I want to see if I can get you the coronet. And there is demos in here as well. Uh, I just want to shout out the uh, Ebophone Solid Guitar Group SG because they're the ones I got these videos from. They've helped me with the prophecy series before with previous pictures. I don't think we're gonna get really a lot of uh, information here. Let's kind of fast forward to the prophecy series. Because that's that's what this video is about. <laughs> this is where I this is the guitar I've really really wanted to see by Gibson or Epiphone, and they finally released it. And let me tell you, it tickles my fancy. Oh no, it's loading. Load faster, damn it. Oh, maybe there we go. Come on. Load faster. Someone got into the room and, there we and, go. and showed these. Uh, they were not you mean like someone snuck in and like... Someone snuck in. Not going to name any names, but someone snuck in. So basically, while I'm waiting for this to load, because I've already watched this video, so I know what he's going to say, is um, it's, it's your standard wood. You know, I believe it's a uh, ebony... These actually have ebony fretboards. Um, they have an interesting little like V-style mother of pearl inlay. You got the binding all around. Uh, they are specific to Epiphone for the Fishman Fluence pickups. Uh, decent hardware, Graftech nut. Um, I might be Switchcraft. Uh, they have a belly cut, as you've seen before. They have three different voicings, from what I've been told. It's like a, uh, Eba, basically, it's like a P90 type style. Like I said, they're not off the shelf. Uh, Fishman Fluence is uh, mm -hmm. partnered up, and they took imaging, um, you know, imaging from our pickups. Mm -hmm. put it in there so you've got a modern humbucker to start then a split coil uh then you split the coil then you get yourself a single coil sound and then did you say sort of a p90 yeah sound? P90, that's cool P90. that's really cool and then you flip this the the tone pots and then you can have a vintage burst bucker so huh. it's literally you have so many tone choices on a four button configuration. So the SG version of this and the Les Paul uh, will have those. Um, and then you'll have some of uh, uh, the most flexibility. And then the three knob versions will also have the, um, the, the modern and the uh, classic sound, uh, Gibson sound. And then you're gonna have a, a single coil splittable sound too as well. With it's neat that the P90 is an option because so often if you you've got here a body with oh, yeah see so look at that that is the one thing i see major complaints with a lot of les pauls is the uh body contour there isn't one uh, i hear that with telecasters too uh everybody wants a body contour you know especially a lot a lot of americans are uh, i think what's it like one out of ten americans now got a gut on them or overweight so um de they definitely need to uh, have a body contour there for the belly cut and i i lo would love myself a belly cut on a les paul that part on the back you can see the nice. back compartment yep. for the fluids. it's going to be your nine volt battery uh so this they are active pickups for those of you that are not familiar with active pickups so 100 percent, you got to put a nine volt in there keep up with that um there the fishermen if you are interested though they do have an option to buy like the pots plate cover or whatever the technical term for that is and uh the plastic piece that goes down there and you can actually uh, do a USB rechargeable battery. So that is something where you'd be able to e fairly easily mod that if you would like to in the future. Here you'll see part of the modern collection. You see, you see that Gibson modern neck joint here. 
let's just fast forward a little bit. Hopefully it continues to load. Kalamazoo headstock custom bound. I do like the new headstock more when it's bound. Um, I don't know why I don't like it as much when it's not bound. Do I prefer it over the old Epiphone headstock? Definitely. Um, it's got all this kind of brushed chrome hardware. I'm personally not a fan of the brushed chrome. Uh, that's not that. It's not going to stop me from buying the guitar. I might wait until I can find like a B stock version of these or one of them used, uh, because we're we're getting to that point. Where initially they uh, made a joke at Nam that the price was going to be six hundred sixty six dollars, but I was like, there's no way. You know, when when a regular kind of Epiphone is in that like five to six hundred dollar range, I believe, with all the features and pickups that are the, this thing is coming with. Um, I, I was thinking it was going to be in the eight hundred to a thousand dollar range, and yes, it is. The, the price for these are eight ninety nine. In case you're wondering, and I think that's across the board. So, Explorer, Flying V, Les Paul. Um, I'm missing one. SG. There we go. All of them across the board are going to be that uh, $8.99 price from what he says in the video. We can actually fast forward a little bit more. I think he says the price. But it is, you can trust me on the fact that it is an $8.99 price. Um, the interesting thing is these might be end up having a Gibson version of them because as we know, so if you are interested in a Gibson version as opposed to an Epiphone version, um, that's up to you if you want to buy that. Obviously, if you got the money, you got the money. Something done. <laughs> that's what it is. But the thing with that is, um, is you know how right now Epiphone, everything is copying the Gibson line, but I'm, I'm guessing that they are going to do the same with uh, Gibson copying the Epiphone line in this regards, because I could definitely see people wanting to buy a USA guitar with those exact specs, uh, similar to like your E2 now, I think is what ESP is called. So like, you know, your top of the line $2,000 guitar competing with your Les Pauls, because Gibson, yes, they have the modern right now, but that is not kind of like the metal machine that a lot of people are looking for right now. This guitar right here, this is the metal machine that is going to compete and might possibly even destroy the ES, the LTD series, you know, the LTD EC1000, because it's got all the specs you want, it's got the Fishman Fluence, the belly cuts, everything, and it's an actual real Les Paul. Uh, you know, it's not just the shape. Everybody's like, yeah, I know you can't make the shape or whatever, but this is all the specs, all these metalheads specifically wanted in a Les Paul, and now they got it. Well, just for you guys to match the other hardware? Yeah, absolutely. We yeah, they um, uh, Fishman has I think some brushed chrome, and I thought that was a great aesthetic. And we decided to. I yet again, I am not a fan of the brushed. Chrome. And this sounds pretty solid, just but based I on. Go that ahead and uh, do the the uh, volume and split the volume or lift up the volume. I think he's going to bring out you yep, up. Here's an Explorer. Now, Explorer. I love the Les Paul too, but uh, if I do buy one of these, I've never owned an Explorer or a Flying V or an actual SG. Um, I have a uh, SG Melody Maker, so it's actually a little smaller. So it, I have a couple of Les Pauls already. So I might, I might just have to get one of them as opposed to uh, this guy. And Is this kind of the same thing in the Explorer style? Exactly. The Explorer style. This is a purple tiger. You can see nice. here. I do cool. enjoy that purple Let's finish. Uh, the downside is I don't the think the Explorer or the VF belly these. cut. So, I mean, I feel like they kind of missed there. Uh, I mean, yeah, you got the 24 frets, Fishman Fluence. Um, all the hardware is nice. Locking tuners, uh, better joint access to get up to those 24 frets. But I'm pretty have. sure the V, the He's Explorer, kind of and the here, SG nice are basically the normal shapes minus the neck, neck joint. joint. So you can have unprecedented Yeah, see, look, there is no, no belly cut here. So I, I think they missed out a little bit in that regard. Um, but I'm sure if they make multiple versions of this model, it's definitely something they could easily do down the road. They have the machinery to do to it. The, to all 24 frets. And you'll have here the Epiphone logo. Nice. Locking Grovers, six six on a side. Sweet. What are the radiuses on these? Are they different on the uh, the future? Uh, sorry, yeah, on these two last ones that we've seen. Yeah, this is actually yeah. This it's funny you say it's a future. It's actually the Extura Explorer and Future. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I screwed up. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, this is a standard and twelve inch radius on. on but it's a more modern radius than on the other ones we've seen. Yeah, so you're, you're not going to see a compound radius on these guys. Um, honestly, 
I don't really notice. Like I have, I have one guitar, my Warmoth, that has the compound radius. Um, it does have the super wide neck on it, so I don't play it as much as I should. But um, like if I pick up a guitar, I'm not gonna know that it's gonna have a compound radius on it unless you tell me it does. Um, and I and I'm perfectly fine with the 12 inch radius. I've never had an issue with that. Uh, but that's that's something you might want to know as well. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like on the 59. Uh, and then they're just talking about some acoustics. Similar to the Gibsons, and we're doing the same thing. And it's actually, these are kind of nice because this is a hummingbird, but it's all solid. So no laminate here. So this, I don't know what the exact price on well, this guy is. Very... Let's see if he asked the Maybe price. some controls inside that sound hole, is that right? That's right. So we are using the Fishman Sonotone. And yep, more Fishman. So I guess that they're definitely working with Fishman, which everybody Vintage seems to be loving Fishman these boss days. Boss finishes. So just like the Jared Nichols uh, and our original Epiphone Master Builts, these inspired by Gibsons. Let's see what the price is. Justin, take us out. Your slam videos, guys. Absolutely, Sean. Thank you, Al John. It's it looks like a vintage instrument. And this right here is that kind of natural hummingbird. And then uh, Justin's playing a uh, kind of a, a faded cherry. Oh, sun. Cool. Like second element, like a microphone or contact mic. Well, I don't know the exact price, but uh, you can keep it. It's probably going to be in the $1,000 range. Most of these guitars are all in that eight to $800 to $1,000 range. That particular one is not made in the USA. As they do have those two USA guitars that are made in, that are Epiphone branded as well now, but uh, that particular one is not. That is a made in China guitar, but uh, because everything is all solid, it's going to be that thousand dollar price range. Well, thank you for watching this video. This was just kind of a breakdown of this. Uh, some new Epiphone news. I wanted more to talk about the Prophecy series. That's where my interest lied lies. Uh, so I hope you've all enjoyed the video. This is Gray's Guitars. My name is Steve Gray, and as always, have a good one.